Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to my show Science Thursday. In today's episode, we're going to talk about nano generators. So let's dive right into it. Well, first you have to understand our need for power is growing and it's not only growing like as in like 2 to 4 to 8, it's exponential. Basically, it's like 2 to 20 to 200. It's ludicrously going up and not to mention even this year, we will consume more power than uh, past decades basically, so to say. So our power consumption is going up. Now, if you go early on as in like the introduction of electricity, that time every load that was put onto the grid was very big loads. Basically, your washing machine, your refrigerators, air conditioner, things of that nature, basically things that were big pumps. Uh, so to say to the grid however in recent time basically as early as 2005 and to 2010 we started to uh, create a new category of small devices now why does that matter think of it this way your mobile phone needs 10 watts to run so let's say 10 watt per day that's not much here's the deal how many mobile phones are there you are talking about a million to upwards of two to three billion mobile phone on this planet two to three billion multiplied by one is a lot multiplied by a ten that's ludicrously lot so you get the idea like we started to create something different basically these sort of devices don't consume too much power but enough of them exist that it is a serious drain on the electrical grid structure so we need some way to power them on top of that our world is getting more complicated we need more and more sensors to make things run uh, longer uh, support us much more better and become more energy efficient in doing so so our need for power is unmatched so to say so we need power there is no two way around it so what about these small devices many of you may think hey these small devices are like quote and quote luxury that is not so anymore because at this point in time you must be familiar with internet of things your mobile phone is an internet of things and soon you may have a refrigerator washing machine microwave these things will also be connected to internet and as of now as i'm me talking to you uh, there are many uh, industrial equipments that are connected to internet now you might be like why the hell that is happening well simply think of it this way these are what we call smart sensors these sensors will collect the data let's say there is a cement plant it has hundreds of motor and all those motors are like big bulky investments those motors are not something that you buy if something breaks you have to repair it those are that expensive so you have something like that and there is a sensor on top of it and it can monitor multiple things so it will be like hey dude i think my bearings is uh, you know decreased basically it, it needs greasing otherwise i'm gonna break out so it yells before it reaches a point where it's like dude because of uh, running without the grease it destroyed itself before that happens so many industries employ this to save money to become more efficient to become more safer because less thing randomly blowing up is a very good thing for safety so this is becoming very important for our industrial sector and you can understand the importance of industry i don't think i have to explain that part so that is one crucial part all these sensors none of them consume like you know a gigawatt of power or kilowatts of power they are mini scale power consumption but they do consume power so that is one thing then we come to the farming aspect you need food you need food to survive so food industry is also utilizing a lot of smart farming equipments those equipments mostly consist of smart sensors these sensors are doing simple measurements like uh, soil temperature measurement air temperature measurement uh, soil humidity air humidity uh, ph level things of this nature basically hundreds of uh, data points is trying to collect and more of these sensors you have in your uh, basically farm the better your data analysis will become the higher your accuracy of uh, tools pick up the better your profits become and uh, cheaper food you will get otherwise your food prices will go do, 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 do. India recently suffered through a very drastic drought uh, on onions so to say so our onion prices literally started to make us cry so to say without even cutting them so happens like food is important making sensors uh, that uh, do that efficiently cheaply is well is our best interest of our stomach so to get this idea we need it then we come to health monitoring now i'm pretty sure i don't have to explain that because after 2010 i'm reasonably sure 100 percent of you either have used a fitbit kind of device or know at least 10 people to 100 people who are using it right now so it is a very big deal so how do we power them right now well we use the battery but side effect battery sucks at this point in time there is no two way around it batteries are just buy it for this now why is that well chemistry has this simple rule around things is basically the bigger is better so if somebody gives you let's say two mobile phones two identical mobile phones the best way you can make them and one has 25 million uh, million per hour battery basically 2500 and then you have bigger one that is 5000 the 5000 will outlast uh, the 2500 one 
very easy like after two years after two years of daily use regular use or even simulated use you will find the bigger cell will have much more usable capacity left compared to a smaller cell the smaller the cell the worse this gets now think about your smart sensors think about this battery size in your uh, basically pacemaker think about the battery size in your hearing aid these things are small so they don't last very long now you might be like uh, why don't we make them efficient enough and use primary cells basically use and throw kind of cells like a lithium cell that is uh, used in your uh, motherboard and uh, many remotes nowadays use that even my watch this has 10 year battery life uh, casio that also has like cr2025 they also don't last very long like your uh, basically pacemaker is something that if somebody puts in you you don't ever want to find it out like hey dude it ran out of charge you never want to find that you never want to be in that position on top of that you know pacemaker is not that uh, like you know that used however hearing aids many children get them like imagine having uh, you know being as a child and be like yeah randomly i'm not able to hear why because my battery died so you can understand that's a very serious anxiety that parents has to deal of and as a child grow up they have to deal with hey this is something that i have to maintain this is something if it's subcutting is basically put inside the skin they have to pull it out and replace the battery or charge it wirelessly or do whatever they can do with this so you can understand not only it makes it expensive it also makes it dangerous so it is something that we have to solve it's not a, a you know uh, no, it is something we have to damn solve it. So that's the whole reality. By our biomedical and as our technology improves, we can control much more things. Basically, when I was a kid in school, basically cancer simply meant death. Now that's not so because we can uh, detect it earlier, we can uh, analyze it earlier, and our medication is far more better. So I have family members who have suffered through cancer, and they're like, yeah, okay, yeah, it was a thing that we had to deal with. Cancer went from a death sentence to that in my lifetime so uh, how imagine a uh, smart drugs that can directly be placed into your body again those will help you drastically however they need power to do so that is why we are talking about nano generators so we come to nano generator aspect now nano generator works on a different principle compared to all other magnetism system basically it works on static electricity and i'm reasonably sure this video you must be watching in winter you must have got shocked by static electricity at least few times by now i'm pretty sure of that at least in your lifetime so we know static electricity, we are experienced with it. Somebody came up with the idea, why not use that uh, static electricity into useful electricity? Can we do that? Short answer, yes. But critical component here is that electricity is directly proportional to the surface area. The bigger the surface area, the more oomph you get. As simple as that, the bigger, the better. So how do you get make something bigger? You make it smaller. Now you're like, wait a minute, wait a minute. How the heck you can make something smaller and mind increasing the surface area? Think of it this way, you have lungs. Lungs have capacity. Now how the heck that lung is doing that? Lung is literally, you have blood that is sucking oxygen from the atmosphere directly. How the heck that's happening? That is happening on ovule level. Now ovules are small uh, kind of uh, structure in your lungs. And if you open them, like, okay, this is this sphere has this kind of surface here, let's open that. And you start to place out all the ovules that your lungs have. This puppy has around uh, one tennis court kind of uh, surface area. So it's huge. So same way. Now ovules are huge things, like you can see them under a microscope. Imagine you made them smaller than uh, basically a nanometer kind of scale. It's huge. Like at that point, you will have like surface area equivalent of a, like, you know, a country, so to say. So that is why we want to make it nano. That is the whole point of going to this nano scale. So we can have small physical surface, basically what you can touch, but in a chemical level, on a molecular level, it would be like, you know, hundreds of kilometers across, so to say. So that's the whole point of going to nano scale. Now, be mindful, it does create AC electricity. It is not DC, it's not plus or minus. It's like uh, alternating currents up and down. And it does go very high voltage. So you have to have a rectifier on it to work, uh, so to say. So it does create electricity. Now, the main reason why so many people are so excited about it, it works on low frequency. Basically, everything work, uh, you can use to make electricity. If you are familiar with uh, Chernobyl, uh, you must see people doing like this to run a basically small generator that can power LEDs. Now, things work. It's awesome. Everything is done fine. But you have to understand, you are not directly powering it through this motion. What you are doing is you are transferring this motion into a gear system. That gear train is improve, uh, basically increasing your RPM. Because if you have slow RPM, it will simply not work. You need very high RPMs. Same goes with every generator we have. It has to be above certain RPM. It cannot work on slow RPMs. Basically, you can have a generator and you're slowly turning it. It will not do like it. won't be like, okay, instead of creating, let's say, 110 volt, it will create 10 volts. It will simply not do anything unless it 
treat just a critical threshold these puppies have very low threshold basically instead of like you know having a mobile charger that are going like this you can be simply walking and it can charge away from that it can charge from low frequency that is the you know golden a golden point about this however this is one critical thing even though it has ludicrously high voltage and people are showing multiple leds those are just fluctuating and please do understand it the moment if anybody like you know nobody says about watts there is the power output is very low the power output all these systems are minuscule minuscule do not think like you can like oh i'm gonna cover my roof and gonna be like you know uh, gonna run my home through wind electricity it will simply not work you will be better off by using solar panels so to say so in terms of power output, it is very low. Be mindful of that. So don't expect your mobile phone to be you know, rescued by this anytime. However, even in that kind of scenario where it does not have the oomph, it does have more than enough and or not to mention our nanotechnology and other fields have improved so much that your uh, basically watch can run on nanowatts. Your sensor, smart sensor can be made to run very little amounts of electricity. And again, LEDs are, do work on these kind of equipment, so you can get the idea. We are very efficient with the energies, even if we can create a very small amount of it. So what does that allow us? That allows us self-powered sensor. Think of this way. You have railway. Railways have uh, tracks. Tracks have fish plate, basically, where the two uh, metals are connected. You want to uh, put a stream gauge on them, so you can be absolutely sure when train is driving on it, it's safe. Now. Can we build strain gauge cheap enough? Absolutely. Can we build sensor that can transmit that data to, let's say, a locomotive where it's like, you know, when a locomotive drives on top of it, it's like, dude, I'm good or I'm not good. Super easy. Then why don't we do it? Simply because even if we can mass produce it, which will reduce the cost of per unit to minuscule, like few uh, cents or something like that, it, the, how the heck you gonna power it? Because if you use a primary cell, which is put and forget, you have to remember that after five years or like one year or two years or something like that. Basically, you have to remember to replace them. And if you use rechargeable, then the problem because how the heck you gonna charge it? On top of that, let's say somehow you put solar panels or something like that, that allows you to charge it like, you know, without any issue or some mechanical system where there's a train running on top of it so you can mechanically reliably get electricity out of it the cells itself will wear out in uh, one year or two years if of heavy used it will wear out very quickly so what the hell you do you utilize these puppies these puppy can remove that headache it's like this is mass produced thing it has its own generator it will send out a signal uh, when it detects an issue that's it you don't have to do anything else so that will drastically change our infrastructure on uh, which our life depends so imagine this hundreds and millions of them put into a bridge where you can like literally check every single metal box before anything bad happens you'll be like dude this strut is like you know yellowing around too much let's uh, fix this issue yeah, before a train is like you know derails we'll be like bro this this fish plate needs some attention uh, uh flyovers you can maintain it dude it's starting to crack please repair it or shut it down or decommission it so those are very important things mind-boggling like right? it will change your life without you ever noticing it then we come to battery for smaller trucks. Our small trucks have become efficient enough because this is an old technology. This is like a made, released in 1980. The Casio, I forgot what it, W8 or something like that is this, which has 10 year lifespan on a single cell. Now imagine it was powered by a generator. It will simply be as long as you keep using it. It will last forever, basically, so to say. And it will not have moving parts. So do not say, oh, we have that. Moving parts are not long lasting. This does not have a moving part. So. Uh, batteries for a small trainer, your Fitbits, uh, those things will improve drastically. Imagine a smartwatch that you don't have to charge every day. So, amazing things we can do that. And then, biomedical application. Imagine giving your child a subcontinuous, uh, basically hearing it if it needs it, and forget about it. It's like, yeah, it's there, don't worry about it. Unless it breaks or something bad happens, you don't have to worry about it. That will drastically improve people's life who are you know, dependent on uh, biomedical devices. And on top of that, we can have even better biomedical device created because now we have the energy source to power it. Now be mindful, these will be microwatt to nanowatt kind of structures because if it's bigger than that, you will know. Like if somebody puts a like you know diaphragm uh, pump on your lungs and you're like, every breath will uh, you will start to notice something think of this way like if you have driven any cycle try connecting a motor to it just a few watt generator try to connect it back you will notice that instantaneously energy cannot be created not destroyed so as long as it's very small you will not notice it but if it's a big load like let's say your pacemaker is drawing one or two watts regularly you will know it you will know it so you have to power it through muscle so you can do it if you power it out of diaphragm you will always doing like this so it, be mindful with the power requirement but it can change drastically it can allow you to put uh, wind mats uh, where wind speed is not too high for a proper wind turbine but it's uh, enough that you can have this kind of structure and charge your mobile phone so small things can be done very drastically it can take care of the loads of small loads but do not expect like a oh, keyboard is gonna like you know power your laptop that's not gonna happen because that means you have to power 10 20 watts out of these puppies 
these are not meant for that try that please try that please try to extract any whatsapp power out of this not your hands on your fingers it will hurt a lot so you get the idea it can change the world it can make world better but do not magically expect this to replace everything because even the science engineer uh, engineer i'm saying uh, physicist who deal with this is like yeah one square kilometer of area of sea if we put on top of that we're gonna get one megawatt one square kilometer one megawatt no just no nobody will allow you to do that block off one kilometer of sea just so you can get one megawatt that's too low so this was my presentation on nano generators i hope you liked it learn from it in that case please click the like button share it amongst your friends that will help me a lot if you didn't like it didn't enjoy it i'd urge you to press dislike press it twice to show me your excited disappointment please leave a comment because i reply to all of them or try to uh, subscribe press the bell icon if you're free and as always thanks for watching